Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another episode of tutorials. There were several requests about how to model cables and wires. So I thought this would be a perfect time to show you. So this is a desk with a couple of assets. You guys can actually model these in a previous tutorial. Actually, you can model UV map and texture this uh, in a previous tutorial, but in this case, let's say I want to make this look a little bit more realistic and add a cable or a wire coming from the lamp all the way down to wherever. I don't have a wall, but uh, you can use your imagination. That's what I'm going to be doing. So I want to show you guys how to create a wire and cable. You may be tempted in just creating a tube like this and then adding geometry to it and then start curving it which is the long way right so here's my you can use this and I know you may be tempted to doing this especially if you're new at modeling and then you can just kind of grab edges or vertex and start moving things down so that's gonna take forever and I'm gonna show you a much more efficient way so we are going to be extruding from a curve. So it's important when you create a curve that you are using a perspective window. So hit that space bar, go to this perspective window, whichever you want. And let's say that I want to create a curve that's going to come down all the way over here. So let's go to create curve tools, EP curve tool. If you guys, I always get worried about this. So EP curve tool options, you might want to reset your tool. It should be in three cubic. Um, you can play around with this some other time, but uh, make sure it's three cubic and you're going to start here. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag all the way down, maybe go over here. And maybe I'll go to the top view and do a little curve like so just to demonstrate how cool this is and then press enter. All right, so then we have this long incredibly long curve so once I extrude from this it's gonna be an incredibly long cable just keep that in mind um, alright so since I used a front view to create the curve it does it places it on the axis so make sure you squeeze that over here to the side and then here we are now this isn't set in stone let's go ahead and control vertex right click control vertex you can manipulate this if you want to so for example maybe I want this a little closer to the table. Uh, maybe I actually do want this to be significantly shorter. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're not stuck in stone, okay? So feel free to manipulate it at your heart's content. I may wanna increase this just a little bit so that when it extrudes, it's gonna go around like that, cool. All right, so next what we need is something to use to be able to extrude with. Now, I could potentially use one of my faces and actually extrude from there, but um, if I wanna move or manipulate the curve, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. So let's go ahead and create a cylinder. I am going to the inputs over here on the right, poly inputs, change my, uh, let's see, let's change our subdivision to 12. Uh, let's change our cap to zero. And then I'm going to grab these faces and delete. Cool. Okay, let's modify center or pivot. Easier to control, scale it down. And I am going to hold down C, middle mouse, and snap it to the curve, if it lets me. There we, nope. Maybe if I get a better angle, C, middle mouse, and there we go. It should be able to, C stands for curve, middle mouse, and drag. And it will snap to the curve, so this will be really easy to place. F for focus. Let's go ahead and scale this down to a reasonable size, something like this. Kind of scoot it really close to the geometry. And what we want to make sure is that this is basically centered to the curve, something like that. Cool. Okay. So edit, delete by type history, just because modify freeze transformation. And we're ready to, this might be a little thick. We'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a face. The first thing we're going to do is select this front face. Shift select the curve. Control E to extrude. Now, this is what we get. It's not very pretty. And it's also black. So let me undo that because that means the normals. So I could reverse the normals. 
or I could just rotate this. So let's go ahead and uh, rotate this 180 degrees. Let's see if that fixes it. So one more time, face, not you, lamp. Face, okay, let's get closer. Oh, wow, there it is, face. Shift select the curve, control E to extrude. All right, much better. So it's a pull. But if we go to our divisions and drag, you're going to see that this pull starts to wrap around the curve. Now, notice that we are limited. We are only limited to 25. Actually, we're not. Type in 50, and you can increase your curves. So very quickly, we I've created this cable now. It's really thick, right? I mean, uh, I don't know about your lamps, but my lamps did not look like that. So let me go ahead and just start from the beginning. Uh, let me focus on my little guy here and the nice thing is is that I can always just go back and scale it smaller let me delete my type history let me go ahead and freeze my transformations let's go to face select the face shift select this control E there it is increase my divisions to about 50 and that's looking a lot nicer it can probably still be a little thinner but it definitely looks better so let's take a look at the mesh. It's pretty low. If you want to keep increasing this, you can always go to your inputs of this new cable and increase your divisions further. It really depends what you are looking for. So that's how you do it. Now I wanted to show you the plus side. So again, Academy Phoenix Plus, this is the plus side of the tutorial. So the cool thing about extruding from a curve is that it's not limited. So that what I mean by that is if you have not deleted the history of this piece of geometry, you can still manipulate the curve inside. Now it's a little tricky because you gotta get in here, but let's go into wireframe. So press the number four on your keyboard, select the curve, right click, control vertex. And you can see that we still have those curves. So what's cool about this is that I can still manipulate this if I want to. So for example, let's say that I want this to maybe be pointing downward for whatever reason. Maybe the outlet is on the floor, so I can force it to come down. Or let's say that I don't like the fact that this is like so. I want it a little bit flushed on the, the geometry itself. So I can close in here and get close, and then that way I have the cables really close to each other, So, which is probably a little bit more realistic. So now um, I probably will add some geometry here to make sure it doesn't break. But that's a quick tutorial on how to create wires. You can use the same theory on cables, wires, anything that's elongated, snakes. Uh, some people use it for hair. I've also used it for creating trees and vines and all sorts of things that tangle. So hopefully you found that helpful. Let me know what you think. If you appreciate or like my tutorials, and want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, check out academicphoenixplus.com to download this file so you can follow along. There's also a lot more information there. Sign up for my newsletter so you can get pre-release content and also sort of all sorts of cool stuff. And also feel free if you have any questions, don't hesitate to say, leave a message or a comment below. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your support. It really motivates me to create even more. So thank you again, and I will see you next time.